Shalom, this is Yah is Magnified, and I'm back with another informative video. Today's video is titled Acknowledgement of Parentage and Temporary Order of Support Vacated. But before I tackle this subject, as always, I must state for the record I'm not a lawyer, I do not practice law, and I do not pretend to. All my videos are for informational and educational purposes only. They're all facts and all truth. Nothing more, nothing less. So with that being said, I would like for you all to hit that like button. And also, if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And also hit that notification bell so you all can be notified of dropping these power videos. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay guys, so today I'm doing this video because I assisted my arc with both getting his acknowledgement of parentage and his temporary order of support vacated. But the way we went by doing it, it was slightly different. Why? Because he had used someone else's services before contacting me. And as I stated in my videos, I do not like to assist individuals who went to others before contacting me because sometimes they'll put themselves in a hole that's too hard to get out of. And I just don't have the time to try to undo a lot of mistakes that is done by filing other people's documents into cases, okay? So now, in this situation, we're going to call my arc Nate. Okay, so what we have on the screen is an email between me and Nate, and we're going to go over the emails. I crossed out his information and the person information who he went to for assistance. Okay, but now, as you all can see on the screen, this email was from my aunt Nate, and the date of the email was August the 17th, 2023. And it reads, he sent it to me, who is Yaz Magnified, and it reads, I used blank and nothing happened in my hearing yesterday. The mother signed my name on the birth certificate and put the wrong social. The judge is telling me I have to prove it. Then I responded back to Nate and said, Shalom, did you reach back out to blank? And in parentheses, I put his name of his channel. Then I stated, if so, what did he say? Nate responded. I did a little research on him and just watched his videos and learned. But. Even with his supposed successful case victories he sent me, it was not clear whether or not he got them off. I already submitted his paperwork, found out about you late, would you still be able to help me? Okay, so he asked me would I still be able to help him? So let's go to my response so you all can see what was my response to his question, would I still be able to help him? So let's go there. Okay, so now let's read my response back to Nate. As you can see, it states Yards Magnified on 8-17-2023. And it reads, Okay, I cannot assist you because you filed his documents and the court haven't made a ruling on it yet. Then he responded back the same day, Okay, thank you for getting back to me. I stated, you're welcome. Then he stated on uh, October the 26th, 2023, I was wondering, can I have a phone conversation with you about my case? I know I made a mistake by using blanks, the individual who information he used, services. Then I stated, Shalom, you can schedule a phone consultation on the same date. Okay, so now let's continue on to the rest of the email or the trades. We can see what else has been taking place. So now let's proceed forward to the next response. Okay, so now let's fast forward to more recent emails between Nate and I. So now as you all can see, again, this was sent from Nate to me. The date that he sent it was February the 12th, 2024, which is this month, this year, at 7.29 p.m. Okay? Then it states, my court date is the 14th of February, which is funny, guys, because that's my birthday. My birthday is, in fact, on Valentine's Day, which is the 14th of February, okay? But not only did I have Nate go to court, or Nate was in court, there was also another individual who also came to me. He had a court date as well. But in his court date, because they didn't want to explain whether or not they was on the record, they had simply kicked him out of the hearing. So we don't know what has taken place after that. There is no orders entered into the case as of yet. So that I would address that at a different time. But let's continue on with Nate's situation as of today since we have his court documents and stuff like that. So it states, my court date is the 14th of February. I wanted to call you close to that date. Let me know when you're ready. Right. I stated, Shalom, I'm available now. OK, so as you all can see, we were on the 13th. I responded back saying I'm available now, which was the day before the 14th. OK, which is his court date, which was also my birthday. So now let's go to the next email. Let's go there. OK, so now as you all can see on the screen, this is in fact the email between Nate and I three days ago. OK, and it reads as per our phone consultation. What phone consultation? The phone consultation that he had on February the 13th. This email is from where? Three days ago, which was what? February the 14th, 2024. But let's continue on. This is what he states. It states, 
the magistrate told her to file for paternity and he will be forced to pay. Then it states she told her he has to be served. So basically trying to say that he wasn't properly served though. Now she has to serve him with a new petition for paternity, okay? And then he further states magistrate didn't want to admit it was fraud, which it was in fact fraud, guys. Why? Because she filled out his information on the acknowledgement of paternity and signed it as if he signed it. That's fraud, okay? So now he proved that this is the order. We're going to go over the order, right? And this is what I stated. Congratulations, Ah, you won, which he did, okay? I would have had him come on to give his testimony, but the reason why he didn't come on is because what the magistrate told her, saying that she have to go back down and re petition for paternity. So if she decides to do that, now he can come to me for full assistance. Why? Because we have undone everything that was done prior. So now let's go over the order so we can get a better understanding of what the order states so we all can see without a shadow of a doubt it was in fact fraud let's go there okay so now as you all can see on the screen this is in fact the order that my op received from the february the 14th 2024 hearing okay and it reads family court of the state of new york county of queens in the matter of a support proceeding the petitioner name i crossed out the file number docket number csms number i crossed out again my aunt, we're going to call his name Nathaniel, who, who was in fact a respondent. This is the finding of facts, and it reads, Sadiq Kaur, being a support magistrate before whom the issues of support in the above entitled proceedings were assigned for determination, makes the following finding of fact. Then it states, Blank Blank, who is in fact his child's mom, filed a petition on June 17, 2022, seeking to establish support for the following child. So ever since June 17, 2022, his child's mom has been trying to establish support order, okay? Then it states, the child's name I crossed out, and it reads, the following child resides with his child's mom name, where I crossed out. That's her full name. Then it states, on February the 14th, 2024, even though the judge made a mistake on the gear, it states, both parties appeared at the court hearing. Court had it before support matter for the subject child against respondent father and a subsequent petition filed by father seeking to vacate the acknowledgement. So again, that's the document that the father filed before contacting me, okay? So he had multiple hearings after he filed the documents, but the court did not proceed forward. Vacating the case, they kept continuing. About to put an order in against him. So he called me up because he wasn't receiving results from the vacated acknowledgement document that he filed. So I walked him through and told him what to say and do on the case and how to stay on topic. He did what I told him to do. He end up winning the case. That's why this order is on the screen right now. But let's continue on. It states, since petitioner mother has confidential address, court served papers on mother in court. Then it states, respondent claimed he did not sign the acknowledgement and the court noted his social security number and his signature as on the petition he filed and acknowledgement does not match. Petitioner claimed respondent himself put wrong SS and he had allegedly asked her not to put his name on certificate of child as he wanted her to get welfare benefits. Court noted the acknowledgement also does not have child date of birth as the right year. Court finds errors in the acknowledgement, so the acknowledgement is what? Vacated. Then it states, blank is granted and respondent name to be removed from child's birth certificate. Then it states, blank dismissed without prejudice as acknowledgement is deemed null and void, the temporary order is vacated for with dated February the 14th, 2024 with the judge's signature, guys. So again, this is more facts, more proof, more truth, okay? You can vacate the acknowledgement of paternity. And I'm going to also go with the federal rules and the state codes in New York to further prove to you guys of what he, we have done and how he had got it vacated, okay? So again, this is just more proof, guys. You have individuals telling you all to go down there and... Uh, legitimate the child and uh, sign acknowledgement of paternity, a bunch of old nonsense, and that individual that's telling you guys to do that is on child support himself. That's why I keep telling you guys, be careful who you all listen to. Be careful what you find into the court case. As in my uh, case right here on the screen, he went to someone else before me. I told him I couldn't assist him by such as giving him paperwork and stuff like that. He called to speak to me on the phone. He explained the situation over the phone. I gave him the remedy to say him to do over the phone. He did it the next day and we got remedy. And now he got remedy in this case, in this situation, got the temporary order vacated. And his name removed on the birth certificate and everything else. It all starts over from scratch. If they try to, you know, apply pressure or come out to him again, he can simply now reach out to me and I can help him with my full assistance. Why? Because we undone everything that was prior, previously done, okay? So now you all can see that you can, in fact, vacate the acknowledgement. Let's find out 
you know, what the federal government say and state codes say when vacating and acknowledgement of paternity so you all can get this remedy. Let's keep applying pressure. Let's go there. Okay, so now, as you all can see on the screen, we are, in fact, coming from Cornell Law School. Let's pick this up at the very top where it states acknowledged father, and it reads, The acknowledged father is the admitted biological father of a child born to an unmarried couple. It refers to the person who has admitted to being the father of the child. The admission may be made by signing a voluntary written acknowledgement of paternity or by an agreement between them and the child's mother. Then it states, a valid agreement of paternity establishes the father-child relationship and confers on the acknowledged father all rights and obligations of a parent. So that also includes what, guys? The duty of support. But let's continue on. Including the duty to raise the child after the acknowledgement of paternity, the acknowledged father may rescind the acknowledgement within a limited period and also challenge the acknowledgement after the expiration of the period for recession on the basis of fraud, duress, or material mistake of fact. Okay? So again, this is evidence that you all can challenge the acknowledgement of paternity. You have multiple reasons why you can challenge it, guys. You must understand what's going on, okay? But now, this is from Cornell Law School, but now let's go over the federal code first, and then I can go over the federal code, then we're going to go over the state of New York code. Why? Because that's the state he was fighting. So now let's go to the federal code. Okay, so we're right back at Cornell Law School, but this time we're going over the United States Code. Let's pick this up at the very top where it states 42 U.S. Code, subsection 666, requirements of statutorily prescribed procedures to improve effectiveness of child support enforcement. But now let's stroll down to five. Let's go straight to it. So they're going to go to 42 U.S.C., subsection 666. Uh, five, which is what procedures concerning paternity establishment, but then you're going to stroll down to D, 5D, right? D is what? Status of SAP paternity acknowledgement, but then we're going to go to 3, 5D, 3. And it reads, contest. Why? Because you can, in fact, contest the acknowledgement of paternity. As I just showed you guys, as is my arc, just one, once you got the, uh, he vacated the acknowledgement and also vacated the temporary support order. Why? Because the acknowledgement of paternity creates the legal duty of support. So for anyone to tell you guys to legitimate the child or sign acknowledgement of paternity, then they're setting you up for failure. That's why it's very important that you guys watch out who you're listening to and, you know, make sure you get proper understanding of what's going on. And it reads, procedures under which after 60 day period referred to in clause 2, a signed voluntary acknowledgement of paternity may be challenged in court only on the basis of fraud, duress, or material mistake of fact, with the burden of proof upon what? The challenger and under which the legal responsibility, including what? Support or child support obligations. Okay? So what creates child support obligations? That voluntary acknowledgement of paternity. Which what? Changes the father's status from biological to legal father. So it's the legal father's status after the acknowledgement of paternity is signed. So again, do not... Listen to individuals that are telling you all to legitimate your child. Okay, but let's continue on. It states, of any signatory arising from the acknowledgement may not be suspended during the challenge except for good cause. So even while you're challenging it and if you're already on child support, they cannot suspend that order until after you prove that the acknowledgement was void. Okay, but until then, they will keep the support order in place. So that's why once my arc went in there, stayed on topic like I told them to. Say what I told him to say. He went in there and did it. And guess what? They vacated the order. So now let's go to, since we're dealing in New York, let's go to New York and get better understanding of what New York states as well to see if the state and federal uh, codes are in what? Cohesive one another. Let's see if that to be true. Let's go there. All right. So this time we're coming from casetext.com. Let's pick this up where it states NY Family Court Act, subsection 516A. This section is pertaining to acknowledgement of parentage and it reads a an acknowledgement of parentage executed pursuant to section 111 k of the social services law or section 4135 b of the public health law shall establish the parentage of and liability for the support of a child pursuant to this act guys so again once parentage has been established that automatically creates what guys the liability for support of a minor child. And it's just that simple, okay? So you have, again, you have individuals on YouTube telling you guys to what? Legitimate the child and to acknowledge paternity. The moment you guys do that, you are setting yourself up to be liable of paying child support. So again, be careful who you guys are listening to. But let's continue on. It states, 
Such acknowledgement must be reduced to writing and filed pursuant to Section 4135B of the Public Health Law with the Registrar of the District in which the birth accord and in which the birth certificate has been filed. No further judicial or administrative proceedings are required to ratify and what? An unchallenged acknowledgement of parentage. So if you go into court, right, or they bring you in for child support and you do not challenge the acknowledgement of paternity, then guess what? By your failure to challenge it, you are now accepted it and now you're what? Held to do what? Pay child support. Why? Because now you're liable with the legal duty of support. But let's continue reading. It states, where a signatory to an acknowledgement of parentage executed pursuant to section 111k of the social services law or section 4135b of the public health law had obtained the age of 18 at the time of execution of the acknowledgement the signatory may what seek to rescind the acknowledgement by filing a petition with the court to vacate the acknowledgement within the early of 60 days of the date of signing the acknowledgement or the date of what of an administrative or a judicial proceeding, including but not limited to what? A proceeding to establish support. Okay? So you have 60 days to do it, you know, but if you do it after the 60 days and your child's mom goes down and petition the court for support, then you can challenge it then. Okay? But let's continue on. Related to the child in which the signatory is a party for purposes of this section, the date of the administration, the administrative or judicial proceeding should be dated by which the respondent is required to answer the petition. So again, guys, you can challenge the what? The acknowledgement of paternity, okay? And we all know that by the acknowledgement of paternity being entered into the court case, places you on the duty of support. So failure to challenge that, you know, you will stay on support. So when individuals telling you guys to not challenge it and to legitimate the child, then they're telling you guys you might always be on child support. So again, that's all I'm going to do for the day. Let's get this right wisdom, this right knowledge, and this right understanding. And with that being said, you all be blessed. And I say shalom.